but it was very difficult as a technical person to find Aaron, basically, um, because you, at least for higher education, I don't know about other industries, but at least for higher ed, I needed somebody who understood higher ed. Um, early on, I did bring on a salesperson who was more like a general salesperson. Most salespeople say, you know, they can kind of adapt to different industries. Didn't work out very well, kind of had this disconnect with our customers. Um, you know, I worked off and on with technical people as well, but until you actually are generating enough business, you can't necessarily pay a, a technical person. It's it's really a, a, a catch-22, um, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. w building your team. It, yeah. it, the timing is tough, um, but it just, it really just took time. It took, I had to get out of my box, out of my shell a lot with working on sales myself quite a bit until I was able to bring Aaron on. Um, so, it, it really takes time. I've seen a lot of um, kind of fellow founders who are very much focused on like the hustle mentality with their startup and they burn out or they just don't yeah. spend enough time. They don't give it enough time and energy and have like that follow through. Um, mm -hmm. That's really what it took. And just keep looking for, for your, your the right business partner for you. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. difficult as a technical person to find your kind of your balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I like what you said there about it takes time because mm -hmm. so often when people think of startups or you join a startup or are involved with one, it's all fast, fast, fast. Mm -hmm. This is our advantage, right? Like the big guys are out there and we're the small, yeah. scrappy, fast moving ones. So mm -hmm. there's this expectation that things happen quick, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. kind of like what you were alluding to, there's so many different hats and the odds that you have experience in all these different realms is so low. Like for yeah. myself, mm -hmm. marketing is very, very difficult for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. uh, to hard. wrap my head around on how to be consistent with it and mm -hmm. how to just like connect with people with words like that. Like if I can get on a call with somebody and talk, which is why I do this, <laughs> this podcast, yeah, right. I do much better just talking face to face yeah. with people. Mm -hmm. um, great. But there's a whole different world um, out there outside of data that you have to get used to between marketing, sales, uh, just professional development with the rest of your team and identifying those core values and understanding it. It's uh, mm -hmm. it, it takes time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really does. Yeah, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about my transition from like large corporations to, to coming to a startup. But, you know, I think Ashley had a transition too when I came on board because she was used to doing everything, um, oh. you know, and like everything was like in her head or like, you know, in her personal files. So that was a transition for her, for mm -hmm. sure. Do you want to talk about that, Ashley? Yeah, please. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> We've talked about this before that like bringing bringing Aaron on, I think I think she had a little bit of an expectation that things were like they were like set processes and like I do I things did. this way. Mm -hmm. um, but the with a, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Like where do you keep this? Exactly. But with an early stage startup, sometimes you get things down on paper. Like I had some spreadsheets with like, here's how I record my sales pipeline. Um, and mm -hmm. here's how we do a, a profit and loss forecast. So that kind of stuff I had because I'm doing that consistently. Um, but a lot of times I would be like, yeah, I have this, this is how I used to do it, but I think there's a better way, or I want you to create a better way. Things change yeah. weekly, monthly, daily, whatever it is. So mm -hmm. with an early stage startup, a lot of times nothing's on paper and it's like, <laughs> let's figure out this process together. <laughs> um, I think we're, we have a little bit of work to do to get ready for like the next yep. few hires. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. cause now it's in both of our heads. Some of it's on paper, yep. some of it's out, most of it's outdated probably now, but yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll get well, there. And, it, and it helps that your roles are so distinct, but now you're bringing on somebody who's an mm -hmm. additional technical role, right? So mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. now there's this complicated dance of figuring out who's responsible for what, mm -hmm. when we both can do it. Right. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it's such a, such a hard thing to figure out over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how much of the business side to involve this new person in, because yeah. we want them to be very focused on solving the technical problems and scaling our solutions, but we are still a team and every business decision that we make does affect this new person also. And maybe mm -hmm. they have great new ideas or new contacts right. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely, um, we don't want to all turn into like the same, person who's like involved in everything basically, yeah. but you still figure out um, 
who all is involved in what, especially with kind of like the the horizontal management style that you know we're all going to be pretty equal, um, but still dividing roles. It'll it'll be interesting. Maybe you can have us back on in like six months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Went. with our with our data scientists.